DRM develops and promotes a worldwide digital standard for radio broadcasts below 120 megahertz. And you're thinking, huh? Well, we're going to tell you what that all means because our next guest is a regular guest on our program because there's always very interesting things to talk about. He's the chairman of Digital Radio Mondial, or DRM, Peter Sanger. Peter, welcome back into tomorrow. How are you? Yeah, welcome back. You're in Germany. I'm fine. I'm glad to be with you again. It's a pleasure to have you with us because not only have we connected with you last year at IFA and I think the year before that, but also uh, got you uh, a year or so back in our neck of the woods in right. the U.S. That's at, right. at a broadcaster's convention. And there's always lots to talk about, but since we last saw you here in Berlin, what's new with DRM? Well, new is that we have at least uh, some more receivers uh, on the market, which you can buy if you want to take one with you to the States. Uh -huh. Will it work if I take it to the States? It would work, yes. It's yeah. a global standard, so it works everywhere. And you can even receive already DRM transmissions in the United States. We really? have a big uh, fan group in, in your country. Oh, yeah. Well, we hear from our listeners all, on a regular basis. Oh, really? I mean, the yeah. first one is in this country, and Germany is funny enough because there's a lot of broadcasting. Yeah. But the second biggest group is in your country. No kidding. Yeah. So now, does that mean that you've got towers and transmitter facilities throughout the U.S. as well? Or no, are they no, receiving no. it via satellite? Or how does this work? No, no. Via shortwave. You know, shortwave crosses over borders over two to 4,000 kilometers. Yeah. And this comes either from Canada, from Radio Canada International, or from French Guyana, from TDF, they have also station. And there's another one under construction in the Caribbean. Uh, there were also a few country, and I, last year, in, or this year in, in, in Las Vegas, I had the pleasure to listen to the transmissions from uh, French Guyana, excellent FM quality yeah. in Las Vegas with all the noises around, so yeah. it works perfect. And of course the one in the Caribbean is going to be closer to us since we're headquartered in Miami, Florida ah, right great. there, so okay. can't okay. wait for that. Yes. That'll, that'll work. Sure. So see, I should buy a radio here and take it home, yeah. it'll work yeah. nicely. Because when we talk about uh, for radio broadcast below 120 megahertz, what does that mean to the average consumer? Yeah, just to split this a little bit, the system which is ready is up to 30 megahertz, so long, medium and short wave. Mm -hmm. This stops at about 30 megahertz. And we have developed the system even further to the FM bands, which is 108 megahertz, let's call it 120, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And this is ready developed. It is under test at the moment. And next year it will be standardized. And hopefully after standardization in some countries in the world, they will uh, use it. It is called DRM plus at the moment. But at the end, it is one single system from long wave, medium wave, short wave, up to FM, so from 150 kilohertz up to 108 megahertz. Wow, so it's, it's got to be some of the biggest band coverage, I'm guessing, yeah. the, the way to describe yeah. it, yeah. Than of anything else that's yeah. available yeah. in the world. Yeah. It's the only one which covers all the bands. Wow. Uh, we know that you have also your own system in the States, HD radio, which is perfect and for medium wave and FM. But we are even a little bit better, long wave, short wave, medium wave, and FM. So this is a global standard. Now, what would listeners expect to find if they're listening to Digital Radio Mondial? Is it a, a, quite a variety in, in formats, uh, music, talk, yeah. uh, among other things? What? Yeah, what is new with all the digital technology? I mean, you have heard it many times, I guess. You have a display, and on the display you see the names of the stations, and the names indicate that, by example, Deutsche Welle is uh, receivable, my own station, not my, but I'm working for Deutsche Welle, <laughs> uh, in the United States by the name. So mm -hmm. people who do not know us, they see our name, they click on, hop, and they listen to our English or German or whatever service. This is the idea behind going digital, being on the menu, if you are not going digital, you are out of the business in the future. This is very simple because yep. nobody will search frequencies on the, some guys will sure. do always, but not the majority. And then you are like a local station, you know. I'm imagining some of our listeners are thinking now, okay, it, it's almost sounding a little bit of like what we hear a lot about in the U.S., HD radio. Yeah. How do you compare to HD radio in the sense that, uh, that it is digital, that it is good technology, that it is a variety of formats and languages and that sort of thing? Yeah, HD is a proprietary system developed by the U.S. broadcaster. They paid for it, and I think they paid quite a lot of money, and they have a lot of money available at the moment for marketing, which we don't have. DRM is developed for the whole world on behalf of the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, because each of the 200 countries or so, they wanted to have a digital system for long, medium, and short wave. Yeah. And since it works so good, we extended it up to 
uh, FM, mm -hmm. and then let's see what the countries are deciding. Every, any country is free to take the best system which suits uh, their, their need, and I think we c should not compete if a country decides for HD, fine. If yeah. it decides for us, also fine. But the fact that it's available around the world, as you mentioned, because so many transmitters are available, and so many languages then, too, yeah. right? We're I mean, yeah. talking about different formats, but yeah. also a little something for everyone. Yeah. So we, we, are, we are assisting, for example, a few weeks ago, the Indians to test it on, on medium wave, short wave, local, long distance, and they decided, the government has decided to introduce DRM. 160 transmitters will be modified, receivers will be made in India. We have one here in Berlin to show a prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, China is still talking about DRM. They have uh, shown in Beijing a few weeks ago the first prototype Chinese production. Uh, the Himalaya you mentioned before, there are two different types, 2009, 2008. So the 2009 type is ready, enters now the market here in Europe. You can buy it. It's very cheap. I will not mention the price. Maybe you get a special well, one you when you order <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can certainly mention price. I mean, from the price range, what, what do people plan it's to It's still to expensive. Spend? It's still expensive because those are the first oh, receivers. Sure. They're in the range uh, around 200 euros, which okay. is roughly 300. Yeah, 300 US dollars. Yeah. But again, you're getting so much more opportunity yeah. here and, and more models coming out, just like a lot of things in consumer yeah. electronics, yeah. so more opportunity. Yeah. As you are the, the broadcast expert in, dig in the digital world, the first receivers are uh, DSP receivers, so like a computer. Uh -huh. The next generation, which we expect for the end of this year, beginning next year, are chip-based receivers. So much less power consumption, much, yeah. small, much smaller. They even could enter mobile phones, which would be excellent in our opinion. Yeah. But this is, of course, up to the industry to decide what they will do. And we just hope that in your country it will be used by uh, National Public Radio. They had some idea to make a test in Washington, D.C., of course, we will support them. We have yeah. NASB, you know NASB. Sure. Yeah. As a member, they are very active. They will also start digital transmission on shortwave, of course. Then we have Canada and, as I said, French Guiana, the Dutch in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Brazil, we made some tests. Mexico, we made tests. So we are more or less everywhere in the world. That's true, and nobody else we can We follow you, that. you know? <laughs> That's true. You're following us on all of our remote broadcasts. And, of course, you mentioned Deutsche Welle and, and many other opportunities. BBC World uh, Service. Oh, sure. Yeah. There you go. DRM.org for more information. Very easy website to get to. We'll link you to Peter's site. Again, DRM.org. For more info, do check it out and enjoy Digital Radio Mondial. Peter Singer, the chairman, thanks very much again for joining us and keep the good work going. There's a lot of opportunity here and it's the, the fact is it's all about variety and letting consumers make those kinds of decisions. Right, yeah. It's terrific. Yeah. Thanks, Dave, for our, having our us here again. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Good luck. We're back with more from Berlin, Germany and IFA 2007. I'm Dave Graveline. This is Into Tomorrow on the Advanced Media Network.